Here is your demo under 20. And what we're gonna discuss here is how to have elements created in small amounts on something that can be mobile and be removed when you want to add it to your mosaic composition. So let's say you make a bunch of different elements um, and you're not sure when you're gonna use them, but you have an idea of how they could work into something or they wanna be added um, later or in multiple pieces in a series, lots of different options here. But what we're gonna talk about here is which of these materials are best suited to do it on. Because a lot of people ask us, oh, can we use parchment paper? Can we use wax paper? Can you use plastic? And can you use plastic food wrap? And the answer is about to be told to you when I make a quick mosaic on each of them and let them cure for 24 hours because it's really important that they are fully cured before they're removed from whatever it is that happens to be in your kitchen or your studio or wherever. And one of these will probably be the real winner or a couple of them. And some of them might be a fail, and that's what you're about to see here. What I also have here is my tinted mortar, and it's just black tinted mortar. It is MAPE, P10, and then I have the Admix uh, mixed into it, so no water. This is also how you make it very strong. So if you are um, enrolled or curious about Kelly Knickerbocker's The Shape of Things course, this is a great lead in to that course because you'll have a couple other answers that might not be in that course to help you along. So really quickly, I'm gonna make um, a small bed of mortar right here. And this is on parchment paper. I'm just gonna, you know, probably go about two inch square. We don't need to go crazy but we're getting a good size bed on here. And then as you may know and be familiar with, I'm just going to do, this is with no nippers. So don't expect this to be technically perfect on any level. This is gonna be my um, Mexican blanket style. So what I'm trying to accomplish here is get this mosaic really strong because if I lift it and I wanna use it somewhere else, I need it to be um, strong enough to adhere to another substrate. And how do you do that? Sometimes um, you could take it off of whatever it was mounted on, we'll call this mounting, and it could fail. And you don't want that. So we're just going to, I'm trying to give it a little bit of some panache here, but like I said, I didn't bring any nippers over to the table for this demo, which I'm feeling very naked with right now. So we may need to go get some nippers in a second here. But you get the point as far as having a nice bed and make sure it's really flat and taut. And this is, remember, this is parchment paper. So this is a little different than maybe uh, what you would think to use. But if it's in your kitchen, which, you know, if you know me, you know the kitchen is all uh, fair game sometimes. And... The husband's not always thrilled when that happens. Go look for that special kitchen knife and it might be being used to rip some mosaic apart in the studio. So there's that. Okay, I'm gonna come back when I do grab some nippers and add a couple pieces in there. So that we're gonna say parchment paper, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing on wax paper. People ask a lot of times, can wax paper work? to put an element on with a bed of mortar. Trying to get it really even. Again, you want it to be taut. So I think an important thing to do here is, we're gonna do it like this, so they both stay down really taut. Move this over a little bit. Give this really tight. So this is being flat is really important to this process. Just gonna make sure, yeah, it's good and flat. All right, so little, again, a demo. So we're just gonna 
Add a little more here, keep it away from the tape. This one will go a little more rectangle shape. We'll pull it off of here, add a little bit there. This is really actually a really important technique when you are creating, if you're going to use this uh, style, because it's really important you get that bed of thin set strong enough so that it can be moved onto another substrate. So you wanna make sure you're really covering the entire uh, bottom surface of your tile. And this, again, color choices. That's a little high for the thin set came up, but I can clean that up as it starts to cure. You probably don't want to touch it now. All right. All right, when we come back, I'll work on these two as I get them um, snugged down and I will uh, also have some uh, nippers to finish this off. Now we're back and I have added um, some fill in with the nippers to these. And there's a couple things I wanna share with you uh, in doing this. This is parchment paper. It doesn't really stick with uh, masking tape, so it's having a hard time being taut and staying down. Wax paper has a lot of bumps to it, and this is doubled up, but even so, it's really showing me that there's some undulation, and a lot of the thin set is coming up higher than I might like, so I'm not sure that this would be a good choice if I went into my baking drawer of my kitchen. Now I'm going on to a four mil plastic um, piece here that is part of a drop cloth, shall we say. And this is what we use on the table when uh, we're creating here in the studio. Uh, when we do the courses and things are getting messy, um, we like to put down, um, this is the mill that we use for filming. So for this one, I'm just gonna again quickly add a little Mexican blanket style here, see what we can come up with. But um, if you are someone that's curious, which is the best material to use under your pieces? And what's great about this is maybe you're gonna make some of these and you don't know when you'll use them, but they're great to have to be added into a mosaic, maybe an abstract, maybe it's part of your background. Um, lots of good reasons to save these things. And again, if you do, um, enroll in Kelly Knickerbocker's course, The Shape of Things, she goes way more into how to create a composition with um, these uh, kind of like, we'll call them focal elements or targets. Those are her words. And what I'm doing is just kind of showing you another way to uh, use how to make them and what is the best material to make them on. So this really isn't a technical mosaic thing. It's a technical how to then better do your mosaic. All right, I'm feeling good about this one. We'll get one more piece down the middle there and we'll move on to our last material here, which is um, food plastic wrapper, saran wrap as many people know it. Um, okay, so here, get a really good bed onto the plastic. Again, not too thick, so we don't want our stuff coming up like it is on this one, but strong enough, we believe, it will um, hold the mosaic together when it's going to be used on its real substrate. All right, so mix some of these colors up and let's see what we can do. Yeah. So I can feel this is a little harder, like I'm hitting the table with a little more stability than let's say the wax paper. So this, um, again, not super technical, but I want you all to have a problem solved if this is something you're getting into because I love uh, this course that Kelly has taught. I think it's got incredible ideas and techniques that maybe you haven't thought of. 
And people ask this question a lot. What is the best um, material to make these elements on? And Kelly did one, but maybe there's others out there. Maybe you don't have four mil plastic sitting in your studio. So maybe one of these is another option. So when we come back in 24 hours, you will see as we peel off these mosaics from their temporary backing, shall we call them, we will know what your best choice is when you want to dive into this type of uh, technique. All right, so I'll see you guys back here in, um, for you and you fast forward to the next section a few seconds, but in my time we'll be back in 24 hours. All right, here we are with a 24 hours later of the four uh, elements that I did in my Mexican blanket style. So what we are testing, this is just a test to see what would work best as far as if you had parchment paper or wax paper or plastic or saran wrap, food wrap, at home and you didn't know which one to use when doing this type of technique, I'm here to solve that problem for you. So we're gonna start with removing from the parchment paper and see what happens. And some of this is as good a guess uh, for you as for me. And what I did realize with the parchment paper is that um, it doesn't stick to uh, the masking tape. So it did um, not go straight. And that can also be an issue as well. So when you wanna lay it down on another substrate, if it did not lay flat, then you're going to have this kind of bowed effect and that's not going to work maybe because I can see already I'd have to cut it and maybe take some of them off so not the whole surface area would definitely not be flat when um, I went to put this down on my mosaic so that is parchment paper wax paper definitely flatter and let's see how this lifts up so this came up okay. It has a lot of wrinkles on the bottom, so if you don't care about your wrinkles, then you could probably work with this. This, a lot of the um, mastic, uh, not mastic, mortar came up between the tiles, but that's probably more because of how much I put down. Now, this is something you need to consider. Again, I did not do this to show you exactly how it would go onto a mosaic, this was specifically to show you how it would release from one of these products. But consider that too, is how nice did you want your edges to be? How artistic is this? Are they going to just sit next to each other and work? Or are they going to maybe be placed, you know, side by side in some kind of um, asymmetrical order? Whatever, that's up to you. But again, think about those things. Now this is this too much thin set here. You wouldn't really be able to put a tile down here later if you needed to. Again, other considerations when creating. So this is done on the plastic. And this is what I would probably most traditionally use for my work if I were doing, like I said before, the Kelly Knickerbocker technique in the shape of things. This is really, it's really soft right now and really thin, but that might have to do with how much mortar I applied to the plastic and you might consider that oh okay I don't want a lot of leftover I want to add it to my four-part series here and now I can do that and this piece just broke off so those are things to consider too now here's the last one this is the plastic and this is kind of what I suspected would happen this is the worst stuff to use when you're doing this technique and there's a really this time it didn't happen but there's a really good chance that the saran wrap, it came off a little bit, very little bit right there. But there's times where entire pieces of saran wrap will come off with this, especially if it was one layer. Because it was two ply and I taped it down, might have helped. But I do not recommend using this because I have seen the saran wrap come up and then you cannot get it off in here and it just stays part of the mosaic. And then when you go to glue it down, you're in trouble but so here you go so now we have these four little parts that could be added to one more big mosaic if we wanted to but now you know that you can use these four but i would highly recommend probably the mill plastic if i was going down that route or maybe the wax paper but definitely stay away from the saran wrap and stay away from the parchment paper so that is your demo in under 20.